Hey YouTube, I have is it eight. How many is it? One, two, three. Hey YouTube, here's eight hacks for your virtual learning environment that will help your kids stay on task and help you stay sane. Here in Georgia, we've had virtual learning now for three weeks, and it's been pretty challenging. But I have a few tips and hacks that might actually help make the experience a little bit better. I know it's helped my family, and uh, hopefully it will help yours. One of the most important things that you're going to do when you're setting up your virtual environment is just to have a, a, a good space conducive to learning that's comfortable and that helps you help them where you need to be. Um, we, we tried to do as best we could, and not everyone's going to be able to do this, to give them, to give them light, natural light, so we have windows by both of the desks. Uh, to put rugs down to keep it nice and comfortable and uh, fortunately we we're able to put them in one space that lets them be separate but also lets us keep an eye on them and I would recommend uh, doing doing that above anything else all these other things are going to be extra help to to keep them focused to keep them engaged keep, to keep them comfortable and to keep you comfortable and engage with them as well so that you can help each other so the first thing is having a chair that's the right size for your kids. If their feet can touch the floor, they're going to do a lot better at learning. So we went ahead and got size chairs for our kids, five-year-old, seven-year-old, but find a chair that's the right size for your kids so that they can sit comfortably just like they would at school. We also decided that taking the Chromebook that we got from the school just didn't cut it as far as the monitor goes. So I actually grabbed an old monitor from upstairs, but you can go ahead and and, and buy one or use one that you have, but give them a little bit bigger screen, something that makes them feel more like they're in the classroom instead of looking, uh, really this, this Chromebook had a horrible screen uh, and, and we just got them something a lot better. That will let your kids feel like they're more immersed in a part of the classroom experience, especially when you know, they're in grid view, looking, trying to look at all their classmates. On a little screen, it's not gonna cut it. Give them something a little bit bigger so they can see all their friends. One of the best things is to grab a set of headphone splitters. Uh, if you have two kids in your house like I do, um, they're both in class and having two competing classrooms going on at the same time is really distracting. So uh, the headphones are really important, but how do you as a parent know what your children are learning and how you should be helping them? So getting a headphone splitter like one of these is gonna let you listen in to what they're hearing without having to uh, dis distract your other children or anyone else in the house. So, really cheap, simple solution, but comes in, comes in really handy for helping out your, your kids. Let me take a minute and ask you if you like this content, let me know by clicking the subscribe button below. Uh, it really helps me know exactly what sort of content you want me to make. One thing that was more important than I thought it would be is getting a trackpad. We tried a mouse with my five-year-old. That was just too tricky to use. Um, just not ready for that. The trackpad on the Chromebook was just not really very good at all. So I ended up using the, the Magic trackpad that I had for my Mac. Um, it's nice and big, it's sturdy, and it, and it has a nice click capability. So, um, you know, my son is really able to, to manipulate that a lot better than he was the mouse or anything else. So that, that helps him click on the links that he needs to and, and mute and unmute when the teacher says. In addition to the trackpad, one thing that we found very helpful is the trackpad uses Bluetooth and I used an extra wireless mouse to provide two mice on the Chromebook. So for the times when my son's acting a little squirrely and he's being a five-year-old or he's having trouble navigating around, I have a second mouse right next to me. So I can either make sure that he remutes his microphone or I can make sure that uh, if he has trouble getting to the links in time that we can go ahead and click on that and get into his classroom. So having two mice onto a computer, especially for younger kids, can really help you assist them without having to reach across. Um, and and I, I really recommend that as, as an extra little bit of flexibility so you can stay where you are and get some stuff that you need to done while still being able to assist them. If you have two kids in your house like I do, sometimes they have to be on uh, speaker mode, right? They have to be able to interact with the, the teacher. Um, and my seven-year-old has reading time. And if that is going on while she's having reading time, that's really distracting. So what, what we did is we took some just earmuffs that we had, and that really lets her put those on, isolate the outside sounds, and focus on her reading. And that's really helped her to maintain that focus uh, while letting the five-year-old 
participate in his classroom. Just a simple pair of earmuffs can really provide the isolation for children who have independent work. And just so you know, in the description I put links to all of the products and hacks that I mentioned in this video so that you can go ahead and grab your own copy and see if it helps you at home with your kids. If you have uh, two students sharing the same space, uh, depending on your layout, you might also want to think about having a room divider. Uh, that gives, that's going to give you the ability to be uh, a parent in the room with both of them, keeping an eye and an ear on what they're doing and what they need to be accomplishing, but also provide some separation from them so that they don't have as much uh, distraction from one another. So throughout the day, we usually just take one of these and set it up behind our seven-year-old. That way she has her space and then the five-year-old has his space. So if you have uh, children who are in front of a desk all day long, they, they got to get their wiggles out, right? So we do the best we can to try to get them to run around the house and, and get outside in between breaks. But one thing that also helps is a, uh, is, is a little bouncy ball. So you can put your kids on this. They can go ahead and get a little bit of wiggles out while they're paying attention to the class. It helps, you know, sort of take their mind off of, of what they're doing and they can get a little bit of motor action, gross motor action going while they're, while they're engaging and listening to the classroom. Now, disclaimer, this can be something that can get a little, uh, a little carried away for your kids, right? They can bounce a little too much. So you might have to swap out the chair and the bouncy ball, but if you see them being squirmy and restless in their chair, giving them another option that still lets them stay focused is, is better than having nothing at all. So we, we find ourselves swapping this out with a regular chair uh, throughout the day. Thanks for watching. I hope these tips helped you. I hope you can make it through the fall virtual learning. Until we're all back in school, I wish you the best. Until next time, bye.